Hello, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Heart to Heart. Today, I'm pleased to introduce you to Angel Morgan, who is my featured centered business, feature heart centered business for the January Opal Rising magazine. Internationally renowned for her ability to facilitate for families privately or through media and for companies across the world as a psychic, medium, animal communicator, and energetic expert. I would also like to add that she is a columnist for the Opal Rising magazine, and she's going to have a monthly question and answer column for pet owners. So, wow, I'm really excited about that. Hello, Angel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, I am so excited to be here. So excited to be writing for Opal Rising magazine. This is going to be, oh my God, I can't even tell you. I have been on the moon since all of this started. Me too. It was just, I, I can't believe, you know, um, the, the synchronicity that lined up um, meeting you and everything that has, that has progressed since then. I am really super excited for, for 2023. Me too. Me too. Yeah. I think awesome. And I find that a lot of um, animal communications seems to be on the plate for me for 2023 too. So you are the beginning of so much that's coming. Wow. Oh, that is so exciting. So let's talk about, talk about you. Um, now I, I, you know, as I was reading this, you know, um, you facilitate for families privately through media and companies across the world as a psychic medium, animal communicator, and energetic expert. So what makes you different from other psychics? So a lot of the work I do is bringing the ancient or the old ways to the today. Um, even as an animal communicator, uh, I don't work just with the animals who are in front of me or with lost animals or animals who are deceased uh, or behavioral. Like this is a very common way of working. I take my work a step further. I work with spirit animals. Um, I work with different cultures and their animals. Uh, I love working in the different realms. So even when I'm working with people as a medium or people as a psychic, it's a really cool thing because I'm able to see their spirit animals and work with animal energy through and so that makes me very unique. Um, I also, when I'm working with people, I'm able to see, I work with the Akashic Records, and the Akashic Records, for those listeners who are new to this, is the library of the everything and the all. So I can go in and I can look at people's contracts, and I can look at their relationships, and we can shift them. But what's really neat about the work I do is, again, I go into such different realms. It isn't just about meeting those answers ancestors who have passed over in the Akashic Records or seeing your past lives. Um, we get to meet your guides in the Akashic Record and we expect the unexpected. Like there's one room in there that I absolutely adore and it's called the Room of Crystals. And when you go into the Room of Crystals, um, and this is across the board, this is what people see when they're in there. And I don't say anything. I just take them in there if their spirit, their higher self wants to go. And you see dolphins and you see all these oh. different and you see this this opening up of the heart chakra of everybody who goes in there and it's so wonderful and that's what I jive on I really really love watching people grow and you literally see them from the beginning of the reading to the end of the reading how different they are like some people will come in and their faces are ashen and then when they leave they have color in their faces their shoulders are down they're up a little bit more they're sitting up a little bit more it's just it's crazy so i think these are the things that make me unique is that i am very much about healing through my readings it's not just about connection it's not just about you know walking to worlds it's about healing and it's a really huge deal for me that's so beautiful. And, you know, I have to admit that that I kind of, I didn't make it to your live um, solstice, um, solstice uh, recording that, or live event that you did um, on December 21st. I actually came in, I think it was last night. It must have been last night that I was cruising through through my Instagram account and and I found you, and so um, I went onto your 
um, your page, your feed. Yes. And I, and I, I watched that. And so I'm just amazed. I mean, you just mesmerized me. Um, so, so I saw a different way of you doing a reading because I was going to ask you a question today and now I'm going to kind of revise that a little bit. I was going to say, um, I was going to ask you, um, do you use tarot cards or some other method to do a reading? But I saw you actually doing something that was so um, immediate. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Really in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And because that is the way I work. I I never plan anything, which is a little, um, it, it gives me anxiety sometimes <laughs> because I'm not the kind of person who sits down and writes out my rituals or my ceremonies or my classes even because mm -hmm. I channel. So as soon as I step into ceremony, the entire ceremony is downloaded. And so as I go, I leave room to meander and to move and to hear. And like, uh, there were certain things that I did that I wasn't planning to do until literally 30 seconds before. Um, like one of the things that I used was uh, I had a, a wonderful, beautiful snake. His name was Severus and he was my heart and he passed away this year. And so he had this beautiful hidey hole. It was like a log. And I thought I need a Yule log. So why not honor him? Because he was a ceremony. Oh. He actually worked with uh, South American medicine people when they were here in Canada. Um, mm -hmm. He was put through ceremony. He was blessed. And I thought, well, just because he's passed doesn't mean he can't still be part of my ceremony. And yeah. so his little hidey hole became my Yule log and will be from, from now on. That will become my tradition. So that was the log that you had on the table? Yeah. So the log that I oh. had on the table, Everest's log, and mm -hmm. I thought perfect and and th that's what I used to do is I used to take logs and I used to drill little holes in them and put the candles on top mm -hmm. and I thought well this works just as well you know so that was something that came about literally 30 seconds before I went live amazing oh my yeah. god wow yeah. okay so now I have to ask you um when did you know that you had this gift oh well when I was a little girl I had an experience and uh, I was in that in-between place waking up and I saw my great aunt and she was standing by a tree. And now I know that tree to be the tree of life. And when I woke up from that dream, my mother was coming up the stairs. My mother was the only one out of nine children who was actually raised with her and her sister. And she came and she said, listen, your great auntie Mary passed. And I said, yeah, I know. She goes, well, how do you know? And I said, I just saw her. And we're Maltese. We were raised very Catholic. So she was like, you didn't see anything. Thing and you didn't hear it. So that was one of my first conscious experiences. And then um, later on, I met somebody who started getting me out into the elements and I started mountain biking and skiing and I became very athletic and, and active. And getting out in the elements started to activate all of these different things that I was so completely unaware of and I started to see and that was really frightening for me. So I needed guidance and through my journey, I just happened to get a deck of cards from somebody. They were just really pretty pictures to me. They were cards. Mm -hmm. you know. And this one card kept popping up and I started to hear, look for the raven, look for the crow, look for the raven, look for the crow. And I happened on this store whose um, symbol was the raven. It's a little store here in Ontario uh, in Newmarket called the Hedgewitch. And we became fast friends and I ended up working there for nine and a half years. And it was also the place where the reader was the first reader I'd ever gone to see. She said, well, you're going to be doing this with your life. And at the time, I don't theater companies. I was an actor. That's what I was doing for a living. I was in the last cuts of Shaw Festival, Stratford Festival. And she said, you're going to be doing this. And I thought, you're on crack. Uh, so... <laughs> I, I, within six weeks of that reading, I actually ended up there. And just recently, probably about two years ago, I was actually gifted with that little crow, that little raven. When I walked in, I saw him on the shelving unit and I thought, this is the place. It was just a little, little toy. And mm -hmm. so I was actually gifted with Hermes. Um, so Hermes. I, yeah, I've always had him on my desk. He's always been with me since then. Yeah. So oh. that's how, quite how it all came about. Oh, wow. You know, you're, that's not unique. You know, I hear that from so many people that um, they've known 
forever. I mean, I think, I mean, even myself, I, I know too, um, as a young child, you know, I've had that ability to, to um, see my relatives that have crossed over, but, um, but yes, I hear the same story and, and the guidance too, of, you know, being led, like your, your, a symbol is presented to you and then you're led. Yes. And what's really funny is my fiance is his spirit animal is the raven. So the raven is a very, um, a very big symbol in my life, not just because it's esoteric, because everybody loves ravens when, on this path, um, mm -hmm. but the raven has really led me to that part of me that is, that is, um, that is the esoteric and the elder that I've become, right. you know, and it's, and it's, yes. we hear this all the time that we, we find these things that lead us to who we are and what we're meant to do. Yes. Oh my goodness. So, um, let me see. Um, Add I have to, to review to my, review my notes here a little bit. <laughs> um, Add to that as well, that, you know, when I started, I was a non-believer. I didn't believe in any of this stuff. Um, that was just, this was not on my plate growing up. I was just one of those, oh yeah, whatever, psychics, you know, they're for the monster movies. So mm -hmm. this was that I had, you know, you don't grow up going, I'm going to be a psychic, but here I am. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. So do you use tarot cards? Because I think the first time that, that we we talked, I saw you holding some cards in your hand and I just assumed they were tarot cards and you were getting ready to do a reading. So do you do tarot as well? Yeah, so I do whatever is necessary for the client in front of me. So most times I do cards, but that's where I started. When I first started, um, I was the, my first day at the Hedgewitch, I was in the chapters because I was so early and this deck kept falling off the shelf. And I thought, oh, whatever, you know, I don't have enough money to buy it. And I literally was leaving the chapters and it was like a wall. And I went back and like, okay, you know what, whatever, I'm going to buy this deck. And it just happened that my very first client was uh, a big wolf dog. Like it was gorgeous. And mm -hmm. he literally, some cards fell out of the deck when I was shuffling and it fell on the floor and he went over and he picked a card and I went, Oh my God, this is so cool. So I used them at first because it was something that was comforting and it was something that I could depend on because my confidence isn't where it is now. And then little by little, I started weaning myself off the cards. I could see the card before I flipped it. Right. And now my cards are my friends and their validation, but I don't need them to work. Um, and when I do lives, I like to use them because people really like that visual. It's a fun thing to, use. so like everybody else, I've got, you know, a ton of decks, but I have two that I work with very, very closely that are like, they're my friends. They're my family. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, let's talk a little bit more about the animal communication because that really intrigues me as well. And how did you like, how did that actually happen for you that like, that you knew that you were an animal communicator and what does that really mean? Okay, so animal communications is the ability to connect with animals and nature on a deep level without words, without verbal, without the tangibles. Um, and the tangibles is a part of it, um, but it's really about a soul to soul connection. And what's really funny is, as I said earlier, I was a non believer and I had gone to Guatemala and I was with this this medicine man. I just happened on this medicine man, of course. And he put me through a ceremony and he said to me that I was going to be talking to animals and that it was going to be something I would change lives with. And again, I just, I thought he was on crack and it was really fun. He laughed. I told him, I said, you know, I, I think you're amazing. I, I think your, your place is amazing, but I think you're crazy. I said, that's never going to happen. And he laughed at me and he just kind of looked at me sideways. And it was within a few weeks of all of that, that animal communications began to happen. A friend of mine called me and she said, come to this facility opening. I went with her and everybody was just politely writing in these binders and I didn't know what they were. So I wrote my name couple of weeks after that, I get this email and the email goes, don't forget you have an animal communications class. She calls me up and she goes, are you going? I'm like, of course I'm not going. There has to be a limit somewhere. That was my thing. And she goes, oh no, you're going. And she dragged me there. And this teacher was so incredible um, that by the end of the weekend, not only was I convinced that this was work that was plausible, but I had signed up for her advanced course. And 
uh, through that, I started getting work within months of that. And this became my everything and my life. And so that was my journey. Like, every time I come across something, there's a question in my head of, okay, is this the limit? And I have since learned that the only limitation we have are the ones we place on ourselves. Right. Yeah. In case, what a huge way. Still does. Mm -hmm. Still does. Yeah. I, you know, when I was, when I, I also went to your website too, and I was actually really pleasantly surprised to see that you offer course, uh, like um, yeah. teaching in, in a lot of these, these areas as well. Yeah, I really feel it's important to share the knowledge. Um, I and I was just talking to somebody last night. I was doing some healing work for her, her cats, and she. I was teaching her how to do it, and it was really neat because it occurred to me, and this is something that's been occurring to me a lot lately. This is how I will live forever: is by passing on this knowledge and this knowledge will be passed down to others and generations to come and these are the old ways that I teach right this isn't just mine I'm keeping alive my teachers my ancestors my old ones the old ones of all different paths whether it's the Haitian path or the Norse path or the Japanese path or the pagan path and these are all paths that I work with and so I am keeping them alive too so it excites me to do that and it was actually that animal communications teacher she she and I were having coffee one day and she looked at me and she goes you need to teach now and I'm like oh but mm -hmm. who am I she goes who are you not who are you not to you know you're not a student anymore and to yeah. this day, I've stayed connected with her and she has been a mentor to me I just had somebody come in the other day and go you know she's doing everything online and I wanted somebody who was in person and I said well who is this person that you were talking she goes well this is it was Sheila and I'm like, oh my God, that was my teacher. So it's exciting to have that full circle, right? Yeah. To know that our clients are shared and that people see me and respect me the way they respect her. And it's it's incredible. The other, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the column. And I think that's really important because through this column that you are giving us an opportunity to share, which is so exciting. And I'm so grateful to you. Oh. Um, it's always wanted to do it's kind of like a dear abby for animals <laughs> and i know we're going to call it angels animal corner and we're going to do it monthly and what's really important about this column is that people can write in and when they write in their questions i'm going to be able to tap into their animals and answer those questions through the magazine and each of those questions like we've already got some amazing ones like one person actually asked about you know if animals have past lives and another one was asked about you know their pet their pets have passed over and you know how how are they feeling others have already asked about behavioral issues and how their animals are feeling because of this that and the other and it's a really exciting thing to be able to share that on mass so mm -hmm. if it has those questions um i believe it's angel morgan dot opal rising magazine at gmail.com see i remember haha <laughs> -ha, excellent good. yes yeah, and always go to Angel Morgan Pet Psychic and uh, submit your questions there as well. Perfect. Yes. And I will have that link to the magazine column um, at the end of the show as well. So tell us a little bit about where you're living and and um, and how someone can contact you for a session. Sure. Well, I am in Ontario. Um, I have offices where I live in Mississauga, and I have one in the downtown core as well at the Toronto Exchange, uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, mm -hmm. So I love my spaces. And then I have my new market office, which is out of the Hedgewitch where I started. Uh, and I'm there monthly, but I am global. I work mm -hmm. virtually. Uh, I work um, through Zoom and uh, Messenger and I do lives for people, which are my give back, by the way. Uh, because I do so well in my life, there's always that thank you. And this is why I do lives on Facebook and Instagram at Raising Energy. That is my company name. So mm -hmm. if anybody find me you can go to instagram at raising energy uh you can go to raisingenergy.com but those people who specifically want to, to work with animals uh angel morgan pet is my website that is animal specific 
Okay, perfect. And I will have all of those links at the end of the program. So if anybody, you know, listeners and viewers out there, if you are interested in um, uh, reaching and contacting Angel Morgan, you can see those links at the end of the program. Thank you so much, Angel. Oh my goodness, I can hardly wait to talk to you um, right after the show here. So um, goodbye, everybody. And thank you so much for watching. This is my last podcast of the season for the year 2022 so happy new year everybody see you all next year bye bye thank you